No. 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 Oh, for fuck! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to SCP Labrat, where we have finally managed to find the level three access card. I say we, I really mean you guys. I've always kind of been like semi against backseat driving, but I think in terms of the episode that we had yesterday, I think I ended up with kind of, well, it was kind of obvious that I was a bit stuck in terms of finding the level three key card. So some of you guys left a, a little helpful message down in the comments, and I managed to find out that if you just put the level two key card inside of SCP 914 and set it to fine, then the level two key card gets upgraded to level three. Which is quite confusing. I think if you're a new player to SCB Containment Breach, that's incredibly hard to get your head around. There must be like a document or something that we just didn't find in the, in the early games, but that's basically what happened. So we're moving on, we have the level 3 keycard and that's going to unlock some new areas for us. I debated restarting the game because as you see, this this giant yellow box here is actually, it's actually the level 1 keycard. Look at it. <laughs> it's huge! So I think Besbro has gone ahead and fixed the, the whole like random scaling of items in your inventory, which is why the level three key card now looks like a normal sized key card. But yeah, so there's a couple of bugs here and there in the world, but I thought it's probably best if we just keep the same map and we keep the, um, yeah, so everyone's kind of familiar in terms of what we're doing. I'm putting this inside of SCP-914 because someone left a, another message down in the comments that said there's a funny Easter egg. If we put the portrait of SCP-173 inside of this and set it to fine, and we'll discover something new. I will say, if this happens to be a picture of SCP-096, and then he comes sprinting down the corridor, I'm not gonna be too happy. If you guys don't know, SCP-096 is basically like this, this just big, gangly, sprinty demon from hell. And if you look at any instance picture of him, he will come and get you. I think it is. It looks like it is. Don't do it. I'm gonna go look. I swear to God. No. No! No! What have we done? I can hear him! No! No! Where is he? Where is he? This is bad! This is very bad! Oh my word! Oh no! I think it's over for us. Oh my god. He's making his way over. Close the door! Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> I freaking knew it. Whoever you were, you suck. You suck big time. Okay. Well, let's move on at least. Oh, another thing you should mention, oh, I should mention, is that look, look at our torch. Can you see it? Can you see the torch? <laughs> here it is. This thing here. This is why I was debating restarting, because this is the torch we have. But you know what? We've got some comedy factor now. So there you go. So we got to be very careful not to lose that thing. Because all hell is going to break loose if we lose our torch. So we know that there is a level 3 door down in the basement, which means we're going to have to sneak past some of the dogs again. Not too much of a problem, I guess, considering that they don't even deal damage to us. That could just be another fun feature of this game. But again, they're always making fixes, they're always improving. And I think there's, yeah, there's a fix almost every other day now, so... Super good, super, super good. So we're back down here with the big talking dogs. I'm not sure if they're number, actually. But as long as we stand still, we should be A-OK. -okay. I say should be. Oh, again. I know that they don't deal damage to me, but if, if I do trigger them, then they tend to, like, just stick to you for pretty much the entire game, and it's more annoying than it's worth, really. So I think we should try to at least play the game semi-properly. Even if they don't kill us, it just annoy the hell out of us, and I'd rather we just didn't. Nobody's down here. We're leaving. Quite quickly. I'm going to get my torch out, it's quite dark down here. Here we go. <laughs> it's getting bigger actually, we've got a slightly bigger torch, that's good. Ugh, I swear to god I'm going to lose this at some point, and we're really screwed. So I think it was all the way around. Where the hell are you? Are you yeah, so technically we should have died here. 
Oh, it did die. That's a miracle. So it seems like that bug has been mostly fixed because I actually died like two or three times getting back to this spot. So we do have to be very careful now. They basically go up to you and tag you and you don't die immediately, but as soon as you try to make any step in any direction, then they kill you. So we do have to be very careful here. That's not too bad though, we can just sneak round. We're kind of going to walk straight into his path, which is a bit awkward, but as long as we can get towards this door, we should be good. Yes, nice. Go away, go away, go away. So I believe at the end of this corridor, all the way at the end, is where our lovely level three is going to be. It's all just completely uncharted territory for me. Um, I, I remember this being just completely uncharted, so I think that's definitely like as soon as we go into the level three zones. I mean, God knows what we're going to face. Face! God knows what we're going to face. Even just seeing SCP-096 in this game, I don't think I ever got as far as seeing that. But, oh god, was that scary. We do have a map as well, that should help us in case we get lost. We found that towards the end of the last episode. It's definitely going to help us out. And I did keep it, and it's a normal size, which is always nice. The little S-nav here. Again, I'm not actually sure how much of this game we're going to be able to complete before it just kind of says, like, oh, this is a beta mode, good luck. But as, if I can get as far as I possibly can before the the demo or the beta mode or whatever this is, early access, before early access ends, then that would be really good to, to do. Nice! Finally, uncharted territory. And it's a blank room. Are you kidding me? I walked all the way over here for a blank room? Let's hope that the uh, 106 doesn't just appear here because I am screwed. At least we got a lot of documents, like a lot. Here we go, so the first one is SCP-012. Feel free to skip through these if you don't actually care, but I'm going to read them because I'm always interested. SCP-012 is to be kept in a darkened room at all times. If the object is exposed to light or seen by personnel using a light frequency other than infrared, remove personnel for mental health screening and immediate physical. Object is to be encased in an iron shielded box, suspended from the ceiling with a minimum clearance of 2.5 meters from the floor, walls and any openings. SCP-012 was retrieved by archaeologist K.M. Sandoval during the excavation of a northern Italian tomb destroyed in a recent storm. Wow. The object, a piece of handwritten musical score entitled On Mount Gol 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 Golgotha, yep, part of a larger set of sheet music, appears to be incomplete. The red-black ink was later found to be human blood from multiple subjects. Following initial investigations, multiple test subjects were allowed access to the score. In every case, the subject mutilated themselves in order to use their own blood to finish the piece, resulting in subsequent symptoms of psychosis and massive trauma. Those subjects who managed to finish a section of the piece immediately committed suicide, declaring the piece to be impossible to complete. Attempts to perform the music have resulted in a disagreeable cacophony, with each instrumental part having no correlation or harmony with other instruments. So we actually saw SCP-012 in SCP Nucalypse. That was basically the, the sheet music that we went and saw. And as soon as we saw it, we just started cutting into ourselves and trying to finish the sheet music, pretty much as it suggested. This is 173, we've seen that before. Uh, oh, another map. That's kind of cool. Don't need it though. Oh, we got SCP-1123, which we've already discovered as well. So I think we're pretty much good here. Ooh, this one's new. SCP-427. SCP-427 is a small, spherical, ornately curved locket made of polished silver material. The ornate carvings do not seem to serve any function. It is unknown whether SCP-427's outer casing was crafted by scientists or not. SCP-427 was created after placing a pill of SCP-500 in the input booth of SCP-914 and using the fine setting. It displays no unusual activity when closed. When opened, a small glowing orb is visible at the center. The orb emits no radiation or energy aside from the visible spectrum. When SCP-427 is opened and exposed to biological tissue, it rapidly regenerates cellular damage and somehow is able to purge invading com compounds or infections. As a standard of measure, the common cold takes 3 to 10 days to be worked through the something immune system and eventually removed. In the presence of opened SCP-427, this time is reduced to 2 to 4 minutes. Healing abilities are directional, so anything 
not in line of sight with the central orb experiences no effects. However, long-term exposure produces a significant health hazard. As the locket heals damage, it optimizes the body's natural systems. Resistance to disease and toxins increases by 500% compared to accepted LD50 or death rate blank something after a total of 10 minutes of exposure and a thousand percent after blank blank 15 minutes of exposure. Muscular systems begin blanking, increasing strength and pain tolerance by 200-300%. Other systems continue to optimize. Class D personnel exposed to the device over an hour of total begin mutating into shapeless mass of tissue. The conversion time accelerates with continued exposure to SCP-427. Alright. So in short, in case you just skipped all the way through that, SCP-427 is basically an amulet that will... It's, it's a healing amulet. It heals all kinds of infections, all kinds of wounds. And yeah, that sounds pretty cool to me. The only downside is that as you increase your exposure, and it only has to be up to about 10 to 15 minutes, the uh, it begins to mutate your body. It begins to make you so resistant to all disease that you become to be like featureless. And I guess maybe like your immune system starts attacking your own body, which is kind of where most of our common illnesses come from, somewhat. Or at least our common disorders. So that's fun. So I guess we could use that if we ever come across it to like heal us some long-term damage from some of the SCPs, but we don't want to use it too much because that would be bad. This game doesn't actually have a health meter of any kind. Um, I've mentioned, well, I haven't mentioned, but there are, there are three difficulty types, right? So I'm on the hardest one here, Keta, but I don't know if you can take a couple of hits from the SCPs if you go on a lower difficulty or not. Someone, if anyone's played this, that'd be kind of useful to know. I know with, with SCP Blackout, you could you could take a couple of hits before you went down, so maybe that's the case here as well. But at least from what I'm playing, if we get caught, it's a one and done. We we, we just get one shot and killed. So we got to go all the way back now through the facility to kind of make our way to the next level three door, which I'm not exactly sure where it is, but we'll, we'll find it slowly. I'm going to go ahead and save it here as well because death is permanent and loading back all the way to where we were is not really great. Hello? But we didn't find anything too useful there, which is a bit unfortunate, but that's fine. We discovered something new about the SCP facility and in, and in the SCP universe somehow, no, not somehow, but quite obviously yeah. knowledge is power. The more we know about how to deal with these things, the better it is, which is kind of the SCP's, you know, goal in the first place, right? Understand how to deal with these things and they're suddenly not a threat. So now we have the very big task of trying to find the level 3 keycard room. So this way to dead end, which is great, that's SCP-914. We're not going anywhere near that thing ever again, unless we somehow have to transform a level 3 into a level 4. Which I don't think that will work. When I tried it before, um, I used the very fine setting, and the very fine setting turned it into a MasterCard. Like, like, like your standard credit card. So, it was completely useless after that and I couldn't do anything with it. I tried to turn it back using the rough setting and it just deleted the card altogether. So we don't want to do any of that. We don't want to go near SCP-914 ever again. Um, let's go this way. Hopefully I can find my way around. It should just be a case of memorizing where we, we need to go. Um, I'm gonna go back here. Just because... I think that that other way is kind of the way that we're meant to go. So as long as I... Yeah, so that was a level 3 room. Isn't the dancing bear around here? Yes. There he is. Oops, oops. So... Can we get through here? Now, with our level 3? No. Control error. Alright, so we're probably going to have to go find a control panel or something to unlock that. It's probably good to know where that is, though, because we will definitely need it come the future. Oh, we can go back into SCP-1123 now. Okay, this will be useful. I'll be interested to see if they've changed anything from the from the first uh, first impressions we did of the little demo mode. But we can go in now. So SCP-1123 is basically a skull that if you interact with, you get some weird and wonderful hallucinations. All seems to be fine. Till we give it a little poke. And we're in a cell. It's not the most comfortable cell. I'll give it half a star. And then there's you. And we're back. 
Yet the music's still playing. Something isn't right. Uh oh. We're back in the facility again. So, as far as we discovered, this is pretty much where the visions end. With this guy. I wonder if his head's still screwed up. Oh no, he fixed his head. I don't understand what you're saying. My hands are up. Don't shoot. Oh, we went walking during our visions. <laughs> so there you go. That's one, one, two, three. Um, I think it has something to do with the Nazis. I'm not entirely sure. But judging by the uniform, that's probably what we can guess from there. Uh, let's, let's go this way. Ah, here's another level three. This is good. This is good news. Okay, what do we got here? Ooh, two SCPs. One, four, nine, nine, and five hundred. Well, let's go ahead and lock this door. We don't want anyone coming in while we're busy exploring. What do we got here? Ah, which one's this one? This is SCP-109, which has absolutely nothing to do with the SCPs that are currently here. SCP-109 is located in non-critical storage, Unit 7, and requires no active monitoring. Because it is a Euclid, interesting. It's an object, though. It should not be removed from the unit except to be transported to a research facility, and then only by personnel with level 3 security clearance or higher. When replacing SCP-109, personnel should ensure that it is firmly closed and that it is placed on the modelled pedestal in the upright position. SCP-109 is a standard issue United States Army Canteen circa 1899 made of tin alloy and fitted with a heavy cotton cover and black leather strap. When opened, the item is seen to be nearly full of water. A seemingly unlimited amount of water can be removed from the container without changing the water level or item's mass, which remains a constant 3.16 kilograms. Probes of the interior of the container reported an estimated volume of 2.8 litres and a shape consistent with the outside. The water in SCP-109 is of a slight blue-grey tint with concentrations of 20 ppm of tin and 170 ppm of other electrolytes. I wouldn't know what was happening. The water remains at a constant temperature of 19 degrees but can be heated or cooled when moved to another container. So that's just like a flask of water that never runs out. That's pretty cool. I'm kind of confused why it's a Euclid class. Euclid means it's kind of semi-difficult to contain. If it's just a glass of water, why would it be hard to contain? I guess there'll be a part two of that somewhere. Let's go check out SCP-500. Let's go check out SCP-1499. Ah, here we go, something fun. Well, step one, save it, just in case something goes bad. What do we got here? Ooh, some form of gas mask. There looks to be almost like a document slid under this. I if I can grab it. I can. Oh, it's just one of these. That's not too interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and interact with it. Wish me luck. I put it on. Can't do anything with it. It's just a gas mask. Can't even put it on. I can't activate it. It just is what it is. Well, you're coming with me. Maybe if we, like, take it a certain distance away from its box, it does something horrific. There's a weird sound effect. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Maybe we can use this to help us get maybe a little bit further through the facility. So we've only really got one level three left to find now. Oh god. I think there's something on the other side of this door. I'm going in. Alright, so, so far so good. Alright, not that way. I guess we'll, we'll carry on this way. Oh, yes, here's another level three. We seem to be like accidentally stumbling upon them, which is fantastic. It's another just random storage room. This isn't good, we need to progress. A level two. We only really need a level three, but we have the inventory slots. We'll carry it around just in case. Ooh, a battery. For our teeny torch, that could be handy. What is this one? SCP-914. Ah, oh, SCP-914 is the trans transmogrification thing. It doesn't look like it's got anything highlighting to upgrading a keycard. So that's unfortunate. 
And then what do we got here? SCP-1048-A. So this is like a sub-instance of an instance. SCP-104A was discovered wandering Site 24, accompanied by 104A, resembles a teddy bear, similar in size and shape to SCP-104, but made entirely out of human ears. A teddy bear made of human ears. Dr. Carver was called to the scene along with the security team. The security team arrived first and attempted to contain SCP-104A. Subject emitted a high-pitched shriek that inflicted intense pain in the eyes and ears of everyone in a 10 meter radius. Ear-like growths immediately began growing on those within 5 meters of the subject, covering their bodies in less than 20 seconds. Every person afflicted with this system symptom died within 3 minutes, resulting in the death of blank personnel, including the entire security team. Autopsies revealed the cause of death to be asphyxiation, caused by an abundance of ear-like growths manifesting in the mouths and trachea of all victims. That is grim. SCP-1048 and 1048-A fled the scene before Dr. Carver arrived and have not been contained since the incident. Though sightings of both have been reported on multiple occasions, shortly after this incident occurred a researcher was discovered missing an ear. According to him it was removed through unknown means while he was sleeping, <laughs> as you do. No other victims of ear removal were found, so it's unclear if SCP-1048 obtained more ears from another source or if it is capable of duplicating objects or materials. There you go. So if we ever find a teddy bear made of ears, Run. Run very far. I'm going to read this just because I think it's, yeah, like we've interacted with it, but I still don't really know what it does. Only personnel who submit a formal request and receive approval from site command may operate 914. 914 is to be kept in a research cell, 109B, with two guard personnel on duty at all times. Any researchers entering 1098 are to be accompanied at least one guard for security or testing. It is a large clockwork device weighing several tons and covering an area of 18 square meters, consisting of screwdrivers, belts, pulleys, gears, springs, and other clockwork. It is incredibly complex, consisting of over 8 million moving parts, comprised mostly of tin and copper, with some wooden and cloth items observed. Observation and probing have showed that no electronic assemblies or any form of power other than the main spring under the selection panel, two large booths are connected via copper tubes to the main body of SCP-914, labelled intake and output. Between them is a copper panel with a large knob with a small arrow attached. The words rough, coarse, one-on-one, -on -one, fine and very fine are positioned at, around the knob. Below the knob is a large key that winds the main spring. When an object is placed in the intake booth, a door slides shut and a small bell sounds. If the knob is turned to any position and the key wound up, SCP-914 will refine the object in the booth. No energy is lost in the process and the object appears to be in stasis until the output booth door is opened. Intense observation and testing have shown of have not shown how SCP-914 accomplishes this, and no test object has ever been observed inside of 914 during the refining process. So it doesn't tell us anything. It just tells us what it does, which we know already. Huh. Okay. Interesting. I guess we don't need to read that then. How do I save the game? I forgot. There you go. So we're not really any closer to getting out, which is unfortunate. There is definitely a door around here somewhere. And is that now? <laughs> we got we got three bodies. I forgot that the uh, the bodies are piling up in the facility. Do I have to be careful here? I hope my PC can handle all these ragdolls. I guess time will tell. <clears throat> Surveillance room. This seems probably like the most important thing. Oh my god, the inventory didn't even load then. If we lost all our key cards, it would have just been misery. Okay, I feel like something's gonna happen in here. This seems like the room where things will happen. I. Also, apologize, we do have this torch. I should be using it. Okay, SCP card three gets us inside. That's good. Something happened here. Does that, is that a button? Ooh, there is a lever of some sorts. Light containment zone lockdown. What? There you are. Someone's coming. <gasps> he just walked through the door. Oh my god. Um, quickly, fix this. Turn this off. Turn it off. Uh, we're gonna have to play Ring Around the Roses here. Welcome, SCP-049. Oh, he doesn't know we're here. So this is the play doc uh, Plague Doctor with the uh, Death's Touch. Oh my, yet another victim of the disease. 
I don't, don't think you're about to give me the disease, not get rid of the disease. Can I lock him in? Oh, I should have locked him in. Okay, we're going to go around again. I want to lock him in. Come with me and you'll see a whole world of your imagination. La la la, la la la. Give me the level three. There you are. I'm busy. Okay, we got the key card. We're going to go out. 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 Okay. Oh. Oh, that didn't work at all. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's time to go. we got to get all the way back to the teddy bear. SCP, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's just shut as many doors as we can. I don't know how long this guy chases us, but hopefully it's not forever. That would be a very difficult to have to overcome. Oh god, I think I've gone the wrong way already. Oh no. I think we might be safe. Put my keycard back. I still have this. I'm really hoping that like in the end game it's like, you will need this gas mask to continue. Place it on the pedestal. And then we'll win and it'll be like, ha ha! We got you all along. Right, so now I just gotta go back and find light containment. And that takes us to the next area, which is super cool. With a bit of luck, we will get all the way to the end of this game just in time for Besbo to release the patch that kind of finishes the game overall. That would be like the dream, but I'm not too sure. Seemed pent up on fixing current issues before we get onto the next content, which makes sense. Looks like we've managed to get here pretty much in a straight line, which is fantastic. I think it's just at the end of this corridor. Let's go see the new zone, the new zone, the new zone. And we can finally get round to you! I really hope so, because you're so cute. Unless you're the bear that was with the one made of ears, in which case... Maybe... Maybe he does the little dance at the end of the bed while he steals everyone's ears. That'd be creepy. Aha! We're doing it! Heavy containment! I don't know why I'm excited. Heavy containment just means that there's gonna be some serious nasties inside here. Right, let me save it. Here we go. Into the pure unknown now. <gasps> SCP-096! SCP-096! What was that? He's crying? Does that mean he's seen us? Oh no. That doesn't count! I saw him through the wall only! We gotta go. We gotta go. This just took a step up and I'm not prepared for it. Okay. Oh my god. This helps us out, because now we can't see inside. I guess we'll go straight. We have to be very careful where we look now. I guess we don't want to go in there, that's for sure. Maybe there was a scientist in there. And he just... He just went... Yeah, yeah, there was, there was. There was scientists in there. <gasps> I don't know if you can see him, but I sure can. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. So I think it's just looking at him from any angle, not necessarily his eyeballs. So we do have to be careful, but we do have to turn on a couple of things, maybe. we got a fuel pump. What's in here? A generator. I think he's, over he's there. Okay. <laughs> okay. As long as we don't look that way, we should be okay. It's very weird being in the room with something and knowing that you can't look at it. When we know that it is pretty much directly behind us right now. We can probably... That doesn't count. 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 That counts. I screwed up. I tested fate. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up big time. No way can it get through these doors. They are heavy contained. Oh. oh my god.
No. No! No! He just came out like a moon buggy. He was still sat down. He was like a grandma in like a mobility scooter. Just like, Nyom. Ooh. So we should be able to see. He's looking at. Yes. We can see the cutscene this time. Run. Run. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, I am good. Let's go away from that, I think. I don't think there's anything that we need there. He's guarding the door. We'll come back later. We'll explore the current facility in its current state. What have we got here? SCP-895 Object Class Euclid. Oh, so I've actually read up about this one. I wonder if we can go in. We can. So SCP-895, I think, if this is the one that I've read up about, is a coffin that appears empty when you go inside and you check it. But uh, if you observe it for any form of, like, from any form of uh, what's it called? Like a security camera, or through like through a phone camera, or anything on that. I'm gonna keep that on for now. Then it will basically make the security camera show a bunch of hallucinations. So sometimes there'll be like blood all over the walls, and you can like go over there and check, and there's no blood all over the walls. Or sometimes there'll be like people hanging from the ceiling. Weird and wonderful hallucinations that just kind of make everything a bit weird. And that is, I think, what, what's going on here. Unless I'm wrong, and then something's going to burst out and kill us, because it's not the one I thought of. There doesn't appear to be any cameras in here, which is confusing. But there you go. So, I'm hoping this is a level four. No, just another three. I guess it can't hurt to have two. Yeah, just an ordinary coffin. For all intents and purposes, it should be empty. I guess you never know until you open it up. Let's get the hell out of here. I don't think it causes anyone any, like, psychological- <laughs> Psychological issues, but you never really know. Unless that's one. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> Is he gone? No, he's still there. Where did he come from? So I wonder what happens when we pull that lever off. That will be interesting. Off. I don't know if I have to like lock it up. Off permanently. Cool. I don't know if it's now worth checking it. I'm gonna do it, but I'll cut the footage if it's nothing interesting. Okay, there was nothing interesting down there. It seems like we've just turned off something maybe a bit unrelated. Like perhaps some, some gas or something. Guess we'll find out sooner rather than later. So I think it's time for us to have another fun, fun SCP story time. I mean, we've actually read many SCPs today, but it just goes to show you just how many hundreds of thousands of SCPs are in the SCP facility. No passing when the Tesla gate is active. Caution activation zone. So if I step here, it activates. Yeah. Yeah, seems like it. Oh god, I spawned very close to it. That could have easily been like a death repeat. Not quite sure how to go through this yet. I, th I seem to think there is some form of like sprint tactic you can do to get through it, but I'm not too confident on what that is just yet. So we'll, we'll move on and come back to it later. So I think by now everyone's kind of worked out that, like, SCP doesn't necessarily, like, have to be anything living. It can be an object, it can be just like a weather event, just anything that's like abnormal and from, from the norm. But I guess the SCP I'm going to talk about today is SCP-999. Uh, let me, let me go in here. And SCP-999 is a living thing. So SCP-999 is basically, it's a big, it's, it says it's large. Uh, a lot of pictures of SCP-999 have it as like this tiny little thing, but it's actually very big and it weighs 56 kilograms. Which to put it into perspective, like the average person weighs maybe around 60 kilograms. 
So, oh god, what happened to this guy? So it's like just under the average human's sort of weight and probably about the same size as a person as well. And SCP-909 is basically a really big blob. Like, alien blob. <laughs> and it's made of like a, a, a gooey texture similar to that of peanut butter. And I don't know why we've got eye drops. Should I even put them in? Just in case. Nothing like keeping your sight up during crises. Plenty of batteries though. And SCP-999 basically is like um, like a friendly dog. So if, if SCP-999 kind of like sees anyone in the corridor, it will kind of like slide up to them and like bounce on them and start like, like I guess how like a dog licks your face, this thing will just like get some suckers out and like start sticking them on your face and making like glooboo glooboo blooboo noises. <laughs> so it's very weird, but as soon as, as SCP-999 touches you, you basically feel this, this huge sense of euphoria, they say, or like really big positive energy. So you get really happy when, when SCP-999 is around you and interacts with you. And some people have like said that it, it like releases a smell that's like comforting to the individual person. Ah, oh, entrance zone. So that's our next checkpoint. So some people have reported that it smells like flowers, some people have reported it smells like chocolate, other people's it smells like Play-Doh, things like that, just like familiar smells that you would like to, to smell off this thing. It's also, I don't think I've said its colour, it's a big orange, like, translucent jelly. So a big, huge, like, man-sized see-through jelly that basically behaves like a really happy dog. Um, SCP-999 really likes living things. So it doesn't, it's, it's a vegetarian. It eats, I think it eats mostly sweets. You feed it like candy. Have we reached a dead end everywhere now? But yeah, it, it loves all things living. And it especially likes those that have some form of um, sort of depression. Oh my God, I've ruined it. I've gone ahead and, oh no, it's over. Oh wait, we're just doing the cutscene again. Okay, we're fine. Thank God. Alright, well we'll just let that take a hold while we, we go back. Yeah, so it, it basically goes up to people who have maybe got depression, maybe got PTSD, and it, it loves them. It just loves to, it loves to, it loves to play tickle fights, that's its favourite thing. So it'll jump on you and then it'll start tickling you, and yeah, it'll want you to kind of like tickle it back and... It's just, it's just kind of cute, isn't it? It's like, not every SCP is bad, this thing, I mean... I'm not sure how I would like to be jumped on by a blob that's like completely smothered or feels like peanut butter. That would be a bit gross. But there you go. That's just what it kind of is. Um, so I'm gonna head. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt this gate now. I think we've kind of got all of the other. Or we've explored all the other pathways. My tiny torch is starting to run out. So I think what you do is you run and then you sprint backwards to get it to a lightning off and then you kind of move forwards again. That's kind of how this works. And then you sprint, and now we're through. Nice. Let's see you do it. I need to go ahead and save this immediately. <laughs> we are not doing that again. Okay, into the unknown. Beep. So with every SCP, or some SCPs on the SCP wiki, you get like um, these logs that basically kind of replicate what the scientists have been doing with the SCP. And one of SCP-999's kind of logs is all about him interacting with SCP, I think it's 682. Please correct me if I'm wrong. SCP-682 is basically like a huge reptilian creature that's... Um, it hates every, like, all living things. <gasps> we found 106. You see, this is Keter class because he's basically impossible to contain because he just walks through all the walls. I didn't realize he had a containment chamber here. Didn't even know you could contain him. Yeah, we're going to need level 4 for that. Oh, I can't wait to come back, though. That's exciting. Yeah, so it's basically a reptilian creature that hates all living things. It's probably closer to, like, a crocodile mixed with, like, a dog. You could, you could imagine it looking like... But because it hates all living things, it's like sole purpose in life is to just destroy all living things. And it's kind of that deadly and that powerful and that strong that the SCP Foundation has kind of deemed it <coughs> unnecessary to live. Thank God we got the gas mask. How do we put these on? That's a good question. Ah, there you go. Ah, oh, so I can put 
the other SCP on, probably. That would be interesting. Alright, we're going full gas mask mode here. There is something here. That's just another one of these terrible documents. It looks like we can't get in here either. It's a shame. Okay, nothing too important in here then. So the SCP Foundation has deemed it necessary to die for the good of mankind because it poses such a threat to humanity. But the only trouble is, they don't know how to kill it. Because it's basically indestructible. I think of all of the testing they've done, they've like poured acid on it, they've shot it with guns, they've burnt it, like you name it, they've done it, they've tried to kill this thing. And so far, the only thing they've managed to do is get it to about 80% of its body mass before it starts regenerating and basically coming back to life. This thing is indestructible. It's incredibly powerful, it's incredibly strong, it's incredibly adaptable. So it's a very, very, very scary SCP. I think there's actually a document of it in this game, so if we find it, then that'd be kind of cool to read up on. So this thing's evil. And they thought it would be a funny idea to show it to SCP-9... Well, yeah, let SCP-999 go and play with it to see what it would do. Um, Omega Warhead Silo. Oh, so this is the, the nuke. Can we go in with a level 3 access? God, no, level 5, yeah. We need the highest authority to go and launch some nukes, that's for sure. Maintenance room. This is probably what we need to see. Weird flickering document here. Wait, there's a guy alive there? Oh, back to the warhead. So they let SCP-999 go in. And basically... It... Like, SCP-682 was like, what the hell is this? And then SCP-999 saw it and was like, oh, play! And like, jumped on it and started like, going in for a tickling fight. I have never seen SCP-966, and I'm not sure I want to. Look at this. Sentient and violent. Uh... Is this its chamber? I hope not. Probably was. Uh-oh. So when SCP-999 jumped on 682, it basically caused it to go into, like, a laughing state. And 682 can talk, and he basically said, like, Oh, I feel great! And just started, like, laughing manically as the tickling fight began. And eventually, like, he got so tired out that he kind of went to sleep. And then the scientists were like, okay, well that was fun, so let's, let's remove SCP-999. So they, like, go into the chamber and go to remove SCP-999. And then... SCP-682 kind of immediately wakes up, and he, like, launches this burst of energy. This, like, huge wave of energy that, as soon as it hits a scientist, it causes them to, like, fall over and go into, like, a laughing fit as well. SCP-079. So this was on SCP Nucalypse as well. This is the, like, weird, funky AI thing that kind of, like, lives in the IT. We might even be able to go say hello to this one. So it releases a huge burst of energy that kind of like knocks out any scientist within its path and yeah, they cause to just fall over laughing. And while they're like falling on the floor in a state of like laughing fits... Oh, level 4 as well. Uh, SCP-682 basically just goes up and starts murdering like all these scientists, just eating them, escaping the facility. He's using it as a way to kind of get out basically. He's adapted to the laughing energy and has released it to use it as a means to go and kill a bunch of people. But they eventually get the situation under control, or under control, but yeah. Just goes to show you how evil 682 can be. What is this? I think this is meant to be a keypad, but it's also got a button. We well, open something. SCP-049 downstairs. Okay. Guess we'll see if this door can be opened. We're really just looking for a level 4. Which I guess is probably going to be down here. I'm going to save the game real quick, because I want to see what happens when we put on this SCP, now that I know that we can do it. Oh. Oh. What are these? Oh my- oh god, they're like Cthulhu creatures! Oh god! As long as we don't get too close, we seem to be okay. Ah. Uh. This is weird. Oh, there's loads of them. There's loads of them. 
They've got so many eyeballs. Or are they barnacles? It's hard to tell. We've got to be careful where we step. Oh, I don't know if there's a way out of this. I think we're underwater. So this is probably some form of, like, shipwreck. Maybe like a submarine went down or something. Or maybe we're on a boat currently. Hard to tell. And now we're looking at maybe like the lost souls, or maybe what like caused the boat to go down in the first place. It doesn't look like there's anything too interesting off that way, so I'm gonna go back to the doorway. Okie dokie. You mind letting me in? Coming through. I really want to know what happens when I get caught. Another mag road on me. You guys are so creepy. Oh, you got a mouth there as well? You got two mouths. And they just stand there, so... So still. I wonder if we take the mask off if we're gonna go straight back to where we were. <laughs> or if we're actually wandering around the facility right now. And all of those things are actually enemies. Like, inside of the facility. Or people. Workers. Something like that. Okay. I'm gonna take the mask off now. Right back where we started. The only problem is... We've lost the flashlight. Uh-oh. Let's load it. Let's get that flashlight back. Nice! We got it back. <laughs> Hello, itty bitty torch. It's kind of hard to really, like remember what it was like as a big torch, but this seems to have sorted itself out now, which is good. I guess we go into SCP-049's lair and see if we can find a level 4 keycard down here. Nothing can go wrong. The last time we saw SCP-049, he was in light containment. All the way over there, so why- like, how could he possibly be back down here? I don't believe it for a second. There's no way. Another one of these. It's just hinting at us to just nuke the place. What if we don't want to? I wonder if SCPs have, like, a king. <gasps> Is that a better flashlight? <laughs> oh my- we can- yes! Yes! Words cannot describe how happy I am to see one! Thank god! We'll keep this just because it's cute and funny, but thank the lord we have this now. Okay. Oh. Wait, you're still alive? Hello? You don't look good. Your chest has been burst out. We have a zombie on our hands. Uh, how do I deal with this? So I think SCP-049 actually makes zombies. When he kills you. Which is fun. So we've currently got the elevator power feed to the main elevator, but we can push it to the generator. See what that does. Absolutely nothing. We, we gotta move in a second, there's gonna be a zombie coming in. <laughs> This reminds me of Time Splitters. Has anyone ever played Time Splitters? It reminds me so much of the zombies from Time Splitters, and I don't know why. Oh god, you're getting up as well. Go away, go away. I'm gonna go ahead and dual wield some torches. This sounds like a good idea. Mwah! Nice. Ooh, that looks like our level 4, maybe. We're in a bit of a tight spot, though, so we'll come back for it in a second. Is this where SCP-049 lives? That's not great. The, at least he's got a bed and somewhere to eat, I suppose. Where's the other guy gone? He's also coming. I think they're just going to chase us for eternity now. We do have to be very careful. There's probably going to be a few, <laughs> few more of these as well. These aren't going to be the only zombies around. Let's turn this on. Awesome! Some lights! Oh, that's annoying. We can turn on one or the other. Drop this, turn this off, pick this up, and turn them both on. Nice. Hello. Goodbye. We need to go back and check that key card. There's another elevator here. Oh. Go away! You go away as well! No, 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 no! Don't catch me! Ooh. I think I've been hit. Uh-oh, I'm kind of slow now. Uh, how do we get past this? We don't. We, we just don't. See what this keycard's all about. 
Level four. Yes, 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 yes. And now really it's just a case of getting out of here. I see what they've done here. We can't go down there because it's vo 49s down there. But we, we have to get past these, but... Look at them! Okay. We just have to play this really slowly. That's it. Come on through. If this was a real zombie invasion, this is kind of lame. Although I suppose they do catch you eventually. They're kind of like... Slow, but... What are they doing? Make up your mind already. Dun 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 It's close to midnight. There's something evil looking in the dark. Alright, enough of that. You try to scream as D-Class gets the hell out of here. Goodbye. I swear to God, if SCP-049 decides to come out of this lift instead, I'm going to be very sad. Here we go. Nice. I don't know if the game would reward us for going back and going through SCP-049's lift, but why would we when we've, we've got clearance here? Let's get the hell out. Nice. And we've made it out, and we have the level 4. So I'm going to save it there, and I think that's going to do it here for today's episode. So, thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and throw out this level 3 keycard, because I don't need that. And, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to play more of this game. It's such a fun time. And, I, I will, yeah, we, we have a bank holiday this weekend. In England, again, we, we have so many bank holidays around the, uh, the springtime that it's, it's actually a bit mad. So, with the extra day off, I'm going to go ahead and give us another video for this weekend. And it is, I think, going to be another SCP video. So, you will see this one coming out today on Saturday. And then, probably, there'll be another one out tomorrow on Sunday or Monday, depending on how things work out. So thank you very much for watching and keep an eye uh, uh, keep an eye out for that one. Uh, keep also down in the description is a link to the full game playlist. If you've missed some of the other episodes and you've just dived in now, you want to go back and see where we kind of started. There's a playlist down there that has all of the episodes in the correct order and everything. So with that in mind, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. So until then, I am you. goodbye. <laughs>